You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yes, by the grace of God. Good morning to you there. Happy weekend. Trust you are keeping well. We are sharing truth this morning on the attitude of faith. And that's coming from Genesis 11, 27 to chapter 12, verse 9 thereabout. You are warmly welcome to the Really, Really Knowing God channel with me, Pastor Larry Adenekon. The channel is all packaged together to inspire and inform you into a rich knowledge of God, a deeper knowledge of God, a deeper understanding of this beautiful God that we serve. And everything is being powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Eduspiration. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are fed up with sense knowledge and now want revelation knowledge, you are on the right channel. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we worship you from the bottom of our hearts. Your word is true, we find it so, we testify so. Lord, be glorified in our lives forever in the name of Jesus Christ as we spend uh, some time together sharing almighty god we pray that these words will go forth with your grace and with your power in the mighty name of jesus christ and do a work in the lives of your people that will be what the water that will be lasting in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you heavenly father we bless you in jesus mighty name we pray amen okay genesis 11 um after the story of uh, the tower of babel we have quite a bit of genealogy, not particularly interested in, but we'll get to verse 27 of Genesis 11. This is the genealogy of Terah, and Terah begot Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot, and Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in the year of all of the Chaldeans, and Abraham, and Abraham, and Abraham, and Nahor, two wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, the name of Nahor's wife Milka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milka, father of Iska and Sarah who was barren she had no child. Terah took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot and the son of Haran his daughter-in-law Sarah his sons Abraham's wives and they went forth with them from all of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan and they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. Now chapter 12. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those who curse you, I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed, departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and the Lord went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when departed from Haran. And, and Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lord, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. He departed to go to the land of Canaan, so they came to the land of Canaan. Abraham passed through the land of the palace to the place of Shechem, as far as uh, Terebin tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your descendants, I'll give this land, and he built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and air on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called the name of the Lord. So Abraham joined his Oh, still going towards the south, we can stop there. Praise the Lord. We've done quite a bit of reading. The beginning was just to give us a background into genealogy, and then uh, it says Terah was traveling with his family, and but he died along the way. He died uh, at Haran, and then after that, God spoke to Abraham. Now get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land I will show you. I and mean, you know, a number of promises followed it. The interesting thing was that Abraham never said. The place you will show me why don't you just mention the name of the place you want me to go the place you will show me but you see abraham just followed you know believed god like that and followed and we read a number of things much later about abraham's believing in god and doing as god has said to him he, he made him some fantastic promises but he said leave your people leave your father's house to a place i'm going to show you and abraham actually you know departed as the lord has spoken to him so we see an example of believing god with all his heart believing the promises of god um that's no way there was no evidence whatsoever and no sign that you know to prove that god would honor his word but abraham believed that word and then he went on uh, and
and, and traveled according to down south really according to how God uh, was leading him God was obviously guiding him to just continue going at the place where but when he got to Canaan um, he says he passed through the land and then the Lord appeared to him and said I will give this land and so there he built an altar unto the Lord and ministered to the Lord so obviously that was where God wanted him to go but initially he moved according to the word of the Lord believed the Lord and just moved on and as he moved on he got to a certain place he moved around there God says this is where I'm going to bless you and uh, turn you into this and that and that you know and he believed God and we know the rest of the story about Abraham and believing God and how that uh, God you know that brought him a lot of blessing and God brought him a lot of honor and a place in the heart of God that we refer to today so our own lesson from this has to do with believing God taking God at his word we find examples in the Bible um, Peter had uh, tried to fish all night and he didn't catch a fish and everything Jesus borrowed his boat and you know he says okay now cast your neck of your net to the right and says ah we have toiled all night and we are seasoned fishermen but not nevertheless at your word that's it when we take god as it at his word things happen to us or things happen for us uh, the other time peter said to jesus if it is you ask me to come because peter had enough confidence in that word come and all that jesus said was come and indeed peter began to go you know, well, there's another aspect of that story, but that's not our focus this morning. Let us applaud Peter for the steps he was able to take. Nobody else did. Praise the Lord. Uh, and it took him at his word, and that was what happened. When we take God at his word, things happen for us. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. In those days, they traveled like family. They traveled like caravan of some sort. They moved their things, all their stuff, you know, and everything. So, you see, those journeys were risky. They were very, very risky things, you know, in those days. So somebody just says to you, move and go, I will show you where you are going to stay. It, it, it means a lot. A lot could happen to you on the way. But when you believe that this person who says that you move is also able to back me up, he will back you up in Jesus' mighty name. And so as God speak to, speaks to us and gives us instruction, the Lord will back us up. By the grace of God hallelujah so we don't have uh, too much here to say here it's about the background okay but God I mean Abraham's response to what God said is what matters here not only did he move in terms of uh, uh, traveling the Bible says when God finally says this land I'm going to give to you and your descendants obviously he was referring to the land that God was taking him he says at that point in time he built an altar to the Lord and he ministered to the Lord you know from the from his altar it means that um, that statement God's promise at that point in time Abraham was responding to it not only in terms of just believing but in terms of worship you know the Bible now records in the New Testament that when we believe God for something we thank him in advance you know you remember the story of we'll, we'll get there the story of the promise of God that um, that uh, Sarai, who was barren, according to what we read here, I just read all those things for background purposes. Uh, when God now said he would, she would have a child, the Bible says that they believed God, giving thanks even before it happened. So when God said all these things about Canaan, he built an altar to the Lord and ministered. It had not yet happened. He had not yet taken possession. He was, in fact, after that thing, he continued traveling. That's what we read. He continued with his journey. He hadn't even taken any possession, but he built an altar unto the Lord and he ministered unto the Lord. In other words, he was giving thanks for what was yet to happen. It was only a word. God just said something. That is the way it is with us. When we believe the word of God, that God says so and so, the attitude of faith is to begin to give thanks because you believe it. If you truly believe something, you already are seeing it with the eye of faith what others are not yet seeing physically what is not obvious physically what cannot be taught with the five senses you have been sensed with the five senses you are already seeing it and so you are giving thanks in advance by the grace of god that's the beauty of uh, the life of abraham built an altar to the lord began to give thanks just because of what god has said he hadn't possessed one inch as at that point in time he was in fact continued traveling but he gave god thanks ahead hallelujah so when we believe god on anything we should give We've got thanks. That's our, the evidence of our faith. But you know what we often say? I'm just believing God for this. I'm just believing God for that. <laughs> if you are not thanking God, it shows that a lot of that I'm just believing God is primarily on your lips. But somebody who truly believes God, who already have an attitude of thanks as if it has happened. 
I like a little mini book by Kenneth again Saturday is coming, something like that. And when you promise a child, I'm going to get you a bicycle. Then what about my bicycle? No, I'm busy this whole way. But on Saturday, I'm going to get you that bicycle. The child will begin to tell his friend, Saturday is coming, I'm getting a bicycle. He will be rejoicing on account of your word. That's what we do when we truly believe God. May God help us in the area of faith. May God help us to understand what faith is and how faith works in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for being there. Wish you a fine weekend.